Um, again, welcome to Binghamton University's uh, virtual open house. We are so excited you have decided to join us today to learn more about Binghamton University and in this case um, about the Binghamton community. Um, my name is Michael Huntington and I am the transfer admission specialist here at the Office of Undergraduate Admissions for Binghamton University. Um, however, I more importantly, um, I'm born and raised here in Binghamton. So I am very familiar uh, with the Binghamton area. Even though I did leave the area for about 17 years, it drew me back. Um, and I'm so excited to be back. Um, talking about excitement, I'm also excited to be joined by my colleague, Doug, who's going to take a moment and introduce himself to you all. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Douglas Harrington. I am one of the admissions counselors here for Binghamton University. This is my fourth year now in admissions, uh, but I am a Binghamton alum. I did graduate with both my bachelor's and master's degrees in 2016 and 2017, respectively. Uh, so I've been here, if you include my time as a student, I've been here for about eight years now. Um, and I absolutely love it. I just purchased my first house now here on the east side of Binghamton, and I am officially a Binghamton local, and I could not be more happy about it. So uh, I'm going to be uh, happy to share my experiences as a student and now, uh, you know, as a local employee and everything like that, um, because the Binghamton area is certainly unique and certainly has uh, lots of different things for our students to certainly enjoy. I do want to point out before we begin uh, that the chat functionality is turned off and uh, that if you do have any questions for us or anything like that, if you turn to the Q&A functionality at the bottom of your screen, uh, and we'll be certainly happy to answer either your questions live or we'll type them out. So again, thanks so much for joining us and I hope you enjoy our little session here. Great, thank you, Doug. Um, so yeah, so we'll just go ahead and jump right into our little presentation we have for everyone that talks a lot about the greater Binghamton community. Um, so first off, we always thought it's kind of important to kind of have an idea of kind of where Binghamton's located. Um, Binghamton University, as you can tell there on the left, we are that big black dot. Uh, we are centrally located not only within the state of New York, um, but also within the Northeast. Uh, we know that that really puts our students at a great advantage for both internships, um, assistantships, and out of classroom experiences. Where Binghamton is located, you're going to be able to really reach the larger cities in the Northeast. Um, anywhere between a three to a five hour drive, whether you're looking to go down to Washington DC to our nation's capital, uh, go to New York City, uh, which used to be the nation's capital, um, head off to Boston, which some believe should have been our nation's capital at some point, um, all the way down to uh, Pittsburgh and Cleveland and Niagara Falls to see the beautiful, beautiful waterfalls there. And if you're an international traveler, we're close to Canada. So you can head over to Toronto, or way up north to Montreal and all places in between. Um, so, you know, you're gonna really have some great possibilities um, here at Binghamton without needing to really leave the state or in this case, um, the Northeast. Um, you know, we know that there's a wide variety of fun things to do across the state, but there's a lot of fun things available right here in the Binghamton area. So as you take a look here on our next slide, you know, Binghamton is really known for a lot. Binghamton is a very unique, um, unique city. Uh, you know, one of the things that really makes us the most unique is we hold the title um, of being the carousel capital of the world. Um, and this is something that Binghamton really prides itself on. Um, the reason why we are called that is because we have six antique wooden carousels located all throughout the greater Binghamton area um, that date back to the 1910s, 1920s, 1930s. Um, and the best thing is these carousels are free. Um, these were all donated by George F. Johnson, who is the founder of um, a shoe company here in the area called Endicott Johnson Shoe Company, um, or EJ, as it was locally known. I know when I was in elementary and middle school, when we learned about New York State history, we learned about how immigrants were coming off the boat in New York, wanting to know which way EJ was that was bringing them, up, bringing them right up here to this local area. Um, so the carousels were built and donated by Andy, by uh, George F. Johnson um, to uh, provide an outlet for his workers' families and their children to go out and have some fun. And these carousels are still in great working order, found in a lot of our local parks, six of them um, throughout the greater Binghamton area. Uh, like I said, they are free to ride. 
And if you, um, I think they were still doing this, Doug, correct me if I'm wrong, but if you do ride each carousel each season, you get to ride all six of them, you kind of keep track, you do get a little pin um, that says, I rode the carousel circuit. Yeah, it's certainly, uh, I'm not sure if they give out the pin anymore, but it's certainly like a senior bucket list kind of a thing. You know, lots of students will attempt to ride all the carousels before they graduate. And it's just like, a, it's a really cool thing to, to say that we have, you know, have all these carousels um, here in Binghamton. One really fun fact that I certainly love is that, um, if you didn't know, uh, Rod Sterling, who's the creator of the Twilight Zone, um, is from the Binghamton area. And the infamous uh, episode uh, with the carousel, in it uh, is based here in Binghamton because he grew up around all the carousels and everything like that. Um, so I believe one of them has a little placard somewhere um, where it was like, this is the one that was based, or this is the one that the, the episode was based on or everything like that. Um, so yeah, I certainly love to, to point that out as well. You know, Rod Sterling lore here at Binghamton. That's cool. You know, growing up here, I n learned all about the carousels. That little piece of tidbit, I did not know. So thanks for sharing that. Um, you know, something else that makes Binghamton unique is we have this, this art fest every week. Um, I'm sorry, every month called the First Friday. Um, and First Fridays takes place uh, during the warmer months where um, all of the art galleries in our downtown Binghamton area come open. Many of them are free. That allows those in the community to go partake in some of the great art, a lot of them done by our local artists, um, all throughout downtown Binghamton. Um, it's a great way to kind of get really involved in the community, meet other people um, throughout the community, and share some common interests with, um, with art. Um, the next thing we always like to talk about um, in that upper right-hand corner, this is one thing that Binghamton is really known for, and this is something called the Speedy Sandwich. Um, this originated right here in Binghamton. Um, a Speedy is a, a cubed meat which uh, can either be chicken, pork, lamb, veal, venison, or beef. Um, and, they're mar and they're marinated in a special marinade overnight um, and in a special speedy sauce. And then they're grilled, um, traditionally over charcoal, um, and then placed in a sub roll or on soft Italian bread. Um, we have two great speedy restaurants here in the local area um, with their own unique sauces, Lupo's s, s Char Pit, and then we have the Speedy and Rib Pit. Um, we always encourage those that are new to the Binghamton area to try a Speedy from each location um, and find which one you prefer. Um, I believe the last time we did this presentation, Doug and I differed on the uh, type of Speedy that we prefer. I prefer Speedy and Rip Pit, um, and I'm pretty sure Doug uh, preferred the uh, Lupo's s s Char Pit. Um, it's just kind of up to you and your own individual tastes. Um, little plug, there is a speeding rip pit right outside, almost uh, the Binghamton University campus right on the Vestal Parkway. So they are a little bit closer than s s Char Pit. And of course, if you are here over the summer, we do have an entire festival dedicated to our speedies. Uh, we do have Speedy Fest uh, with a hot air balloon rally and everything like that. Um, it's a lot of fun to go to. They have usually, you know, in, in a normal year, they'll have a bunch of events and uh, celebrity guests. And um, it's just a really fun time to go to and check out. So um, it's certainly a staple here now, uh, here in the Southern Tier, um, you know, the speedies and everything that it kind of brings, brings everyone together kind of a thing. Absolutely. Um, another thing that kind of makes Binghamton unique and why Binghamton is located where Binghamton is, is because the Binghamton is the joining of two rivers, uh, the Susquehanna River um, and the Shenango River. As you can tell in that lower left-hand corner, that is actually Confluence Point, the confluence of where those two rivers meet. Um, this is a really scenic spot. Uh, that's had a lot of upgrades to it over the past several years, including an addition of a river walking trail that allows you to walk right along the Shenango River down to right where it meets the Susquehanna. Um, and our downtown campus um, sits actually right along the uh, Shenango River, right down there by Confluence Point. Um, like I said, is a beautiful scenic area, some great walking trails. Um, did not This area did not exist when I was growing up. Um, and it is an absolutely breathtaking park, especially to catch some sunrises and some sunsets. Um, as Doug had mentioned um, over the summer, we have our uh, Speedy Fest and Balloon Rally, um, great scenic 
spot to take some pictures of some some hot air balloons up in the sky as they all kind of travel a little bit over this particular point. Uh, the other, the last thing that kind of makes Binghamton unique um, is uh, that picture you see in that lower right hand corner of your screen. And that is a newer project that goes on here in Binghamton, um, usually at the very beginning of the fall semesters. This year with COVID, it unfortunately did not happen. Um, but this is our LUMA project. Um, and LUMA is a wonderful, um, cool uh, uh, activity where um, they project a lot of fine art shows and light shows onto the architecture in downtown Binghamton. They put on these great performances utilizing these structures that are already there and the buildings really come to life. Um, what makes this really cool is the fact that it draws everybody in the Binghamton area, young, old, college students to middle school students to senior citizens, all coming together in our downtown area for an awesome cause. Um, I went to Luma for the first time last year and I was just absolutely blown away. As I said, I grew, I grew up here in Binghamton. I have not seen so many people in one area um, in Binghamton in such a long time. It really brought me back to my childhood when we had used to have BC pops on the river where the, our Broom County pops would, would play on a floating barge in the river. Um, it really reminded me of that. And you can tell that by looking at the picture by the amount of people um, down there. Um, and I will throw this out that this picture is from last year. So that's why if you look closely, there's no one wearing masks. We're not social distancing. That was before any of that kind of came into play. Doug, anything else you want to add about Luma? Yeah, it's personally one of my favorite events of all time. Uh, it started when I was a student um, and I have not missed one since it is absolutely incredible to go to um it does bring like mike said it brings over sixty five thousand people downtown binghamton um it's and it's expanded which is even better it started as a first friday um but now it has expanded into an entire weekend and there's even additional things that are available um like one a couple of our restaurants do a dining in the dark experience um where you're you eat your entire meal in pitch black um as well as some other other uh, activities that they do. Uh, they even had, did one inside of a church. Uh, so like Mike mentioned, it's free for the most part. There is one, one time they did it inside of a church where the Binghamton Philharmonic played along. Um, and I think the ticket was like $5. It was super cheap, um, but it was an incredible experience. Um, and it's super hard to do it justice, just kind of talking about it. It's just one of those things that you almost have to just kind of experience yourself, but it's absolutely incredible. And a lot of people's favorite time of the year. And if you are interested in learning more about LUMA, um, I'm pretty sure that if you did a uh, Google search for LUMA, L-U-M-A Binghamton, uh, you're going get, to get to see some videos, some examples of some of the amazing stuff that they have done. And Doug, correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't LUMA created by Binghamton alumni? You are correct. It was absolutely created by Binghamton alumni. Um, it's one of those things that they wanted to give back to the, to the city and to the university and to the students and to everyone around. Um, and it, it's really an amazing event that we, it's really one of the only types of light shows like this in the entire world. Again, kind of what makes Binghamton unique. So let's talk a little bit um, about outdoor pursuits. Obviously, you know, you're interested in coming to Binghamton for academics, but what else is there are you able to do, and especially if you want to go off campus? Not that there's not a lot of great recreational activities, club sports, um, intramurals, um, and also, you know, student clubs and organizations on campus. Um, but there's a lot of great things to do off campus as well if you're, if you're an outdoorsy person. Um, I always like to talk about the, the seven different county parks uh, within Broome County, um, which of course Broome County is the county in which Binghamton is located and Binghamton is the county seat. Um, each of our county parks kind of has their own unique pursuits, um, different things you can do at each park. Um, and some of these things, of course, are going to be walking trails, hiking trails, biking trails. Um, if you're into snowshoeing, cross-country skiing, you're going to have a lot of great opportunities for that. Um, during the warmer months, if you're into volleyball, badminton, there's some great sand courts that you can uh, play in, um, softball fields, 
playgrounds. Let's be honest. If I see a swing set or a slide, I'm 38 years old. I'm still going to go swing on a swing set. I'm still going to go down the slide. Um, playgrounds are still really a lot of fun for anyone of all ages, not just for, not just for the little kids. Um, in the warmer months, there's boat rentals. So if you want to go out on any of the lakes um, in our county parks, you can rent kayaks, canoes, um, little boats. You'll be able to do that. Um, and of course, swimming. Um, you can swim at, I think, almost every county park. I think there might be one of two that where there just isn't any place to swim. Um, but a lot of our other county parks, Dorchester, Greenwood, all of that, you'll have the ability to swim in the lakes. Um, they all have sand beaches as well and fishing. Um, fishing you can do almost year round here in the Binghamton area, depending on the type of fish you are looking to, uh, to fish for. Um, and also in the area, we are also fortunate enough to have our Shenango Valley State Park, um, which our state park is absolutely gorgeous. Um, it is a little further away um, from the campus. You're looking about maybe 15 to 20 minutes uh, to get out to Shenango Valley State Park. And there is a fee um, for parking. Um, I believe it's about 7 to $10 depending on where you are in the season. Um, and at the Shenango Valley State Park, again, you're gonna, there's some great hiking trails, biking trails, walking trails. Again, more snowshoeing, cross-country skiing, great place for cross-country skiing. Uh, during the winter months, if you have a sled, um, they have some of the best sledding hills um, in the area. Um, this past winter, I just moved back to the area and I was right there at Shenango Valley with with an inner tube. I was going down some of those hills. It was it was great. Who needs to go to an amusement park when we got some great sliding hills at Shenango Valley? Um, there's a golf course. So if you're a golfer, uh, you can go golfing at, at the state park. And again, um, there's boat rentals, swimming, beaches, things like that. But what sets Shenango Valley State Park a uh, little different than our county parks is there are campsites that you can rent. Um, and there are actually some cabins there as well. So if you're not much of a, a tenter, you don't like to pitch a tent and sleep on the ground, you can rent um, one of the cabins there at Shenango Valley State Park as well. And of course, we would be remiss if we didn't mention some of the great major sporting events that take place here in the Binghamton area. Of course, we would be remiss if we didn't talk about our own athletics, um, the Binghamton University Bearcats uh, Athletics Department. Uh, we are a Division I school, so we have quite a few D1 sports uh, from men's basketball to cross country um, to soccer. Same thing with women. Um, women's uh, cross country, soccer, lacrosse, things of that nature. Um, we also have a lot of club sports and intramurals as well. So if you're not a D division one athlete, but you like to, to, you know, play definitely a lot of great things that you'll be able to access there at, um, right here at BU. Um, our campus really does rally around our men's and women's basketball. That is a big rally point for, us here at Binghamton that does draw quite a large crowd from the Binghamton community. Now, if you're into baseball itself, um, besides what Binghamton University has to offer, we do have our own farm, our uh, AAA team, the uh, Binghamton Rumble Ponies, which is the farm team currently for the Binghamton Mets um, that play right down in downtown Binghamton. A couple years ago, uh, we had, um, who was it, Doug? Tim, Tim Tebow? Tebow? Yep, Tim Tebow. Tim Tebow was playing here uh, for Binghamton. I think he played for one or two seasons. Um, and he really did get to know the Binghamton area. I remember reading an article where he really enjoyed the Binghamton area. So maybe when, when he uh, retires, he may find himself back here in the Binghamton area. Now, maybe you're more of a hockey fan like I am. I love hockey. Um, we are the um, farm team, if you will, for the New Jersey Devils. Um, so we have the Binghamton Devils here at Binghamton. Binghamton has a very rich history when it comes to hockey. We have had a hockey team here for the longest time, starting from the BC uh, Whalers. Um, I think we had a team called the Sweepers for a little bit. Um, we had the BC Icemen, which was a non-NHL affiliate team. Um, Binghamton Rangers were here for the longest time. Um, and then most recently before the Devils, we were the farm team for the Ottawa Senators as the Binghamton Senators that did win the Calder Cup, which is the uh, minor league version of the Stanley Cup. So Binghamton, very proud, rich history um, when it comes to hockey. 
Now, maybe we're not interested in hockey. Maybe you're more of uh, of a golf a golf aficionado. Like I'm pretty sure Doug is. I think Doug has been known to hit some balls out on the link. Um, I golf, but only the mini version. But we do offer the Dick Sporting Goods Open. Um, this normally takes place in August. Um, that it, this is part of the PGA Tour. Um, and usually the, the whole area does rally around the Dick Sporting Goods um, because it's a really great way to get our name out there. And usually it normally brings in a huge music act. Um, a couple years ago um, was, his name does escape me. Oh, uh, J John Bon Jovi has played um, Matchbox 20 or Rob Thomas. I can't remember if it was just Rob Thomas or if it was Matchbox 20. One of them was also playing here um, that I had tickets for that I unfortunately got sick and cannot go see. And I was very disappointed. I still have not gotten over that. Lastly, maybe you're more of a tennis person. Uh, we do have a, a pro circuit event here that normally takes place at Recreation Park, one of our local uh, city parks. Um, the Levine Golden Thompson Tennis Challenger. Again, pro circuit event. Um, I, it's normally a huge draw that does kind of draw out some big names. I remember growing up, even though it was called something different, uh, Billie Jean King actually came uh, to Binghamton and was a spectator uh, for this event. So it really does draw some really great, huge, big names. So as you can tell, Binghamton, very rich um, with different sporting events, uh, both from the, uh, the collegiate level um, to the uh, uh, minor leagues. Um, and let's not forget about our high school sports as well. Um, we have, we're surrounded by a lot of local uh, school districts that have football teams, baseball teams, football, very big, a lot of competitors between our local school districts. All right, folks, it is my turn, and I get to start off talking about one of the best things about the area is certainly our food scene. Um, you can see here that this is just a, a handful of local restaurants that we do have here at Bing in the Binghamton area. We are becoming a foodie capital, I certainly like to say. We've opened around five or six restaurants in the last year alone, including one that just opened about a week and a half ago uh, called The Stone Fox. Uh, I'm super excited to try that. I haven't quite tried it out yet. Um, these are just a handful. We, we pulled our staff to see what their favorite restaurants are. My personal favorite is called The Colonial. You can see there. Uh, it's a little bit more of a gastro pub uh, kind of a place. They have really amazing decor. It's a great atmosphere, but their food is also incredible, especially their wings. Uh, really amazing wings there. Uh, Binghamton's one of more, more well-known restaurants is certainly the Lost Dog Cafe and Lounge. Um, if you ever go there, you go, you get the rigatoni alla vodka and you don't ask any other questions. You just go, you go get it. Um, it is absolutely amazing. I, I literally eaten at Lost Dog probably 10 times or so, and I have never gotten anything else but the rigatoni. Um, it's what they're known for and is absolutely incredible. Uh, we have amazing other restaurants like Kraft, which is more of a, um, you know, slider place, sliders and milkshakes, social on state, which is more of a tapas place, 205 dry, which is actually our speakeasy here in Binghamton. We do have an amazing speakeasy uh, where you actually go through and you walk through a bookcase and it's a, it's a really amazing atmosphere that we do have here. Dos Rios Cantina, which was actually just ranked to have one of the best burritos in the entire country by Food Network. Um, and I can confirm it is delicious because I had it about a week after that ranking came out and I was super excited to have it. Um, but like I said, these are just a handful. I mean, we have other places uh, like Peterson's Tavern. We have uh, Paul and Sons Pizzeria. We have, um, I mentioned Stone Fox, uh, Sakatumi, if you're interested in like sushi and stuff like that. There is certainly a plethora of food places in the area that are still doing very well now. Uh, they're, they've switched to an online system or sorry, a takeout system. Um, and especially like places like Burger Mondays, they have these boxes where it's like 30 bucks and you get like six burgers and six orders of fries for 30 bucks. It's absolutely, it's like such like one of the best deals that have come out of this. Um, and my family was actually just up this past weekend and we got it um, with them and it was just really, really delicious. So there is certainly lots of local flair. Um, we have a little bit more ethnic food. We have, um, you know, we have a restaurant called check please, which focuses more on check food. We have, um, uh, News and Toes, which is a, a sandwich place, but a little bit more of a Caribbean style. We have um, 
oh goodness, there's a French restaurant uh, down on the parkway that the name escapes me at this time. Um, but there's certainly lots of different places in the area that, you know, while we do have the chain restaurants, you know, we have the Chili's, we have the Applebee's, we have the Red Robin, we have the Texas Roadhouse. We have, and we have the Olive Garden. And we have the Olive Garden. Can't forget the Olive Garden. Go visit Mike when he works there. Um, <laughs> Can't can never forget that. Um, we do have an amazing local restaurant scene as well. If you're interested in maybe more of a fancier restaurant meal, um, you know, fancier meal, maybe your graduation dinner, you can already start thinking about that. Um, Remlix is is an amazing spot um, to kind of go do that. Uh, we have a really uh, nice restaurant called Moxie's. Um, I would recommend the number five, but the the owner just retired and did sell that, so. Um, we have uh, McCoy's Chop House, which is in Endicott. So don't only, don't forget, you don't you don't only have Binghamton. You have Endicott, which has all of like Little Italy and everything like that. Um, you know, they've got Antonio's, they've got consoles, they've got all that Italian fare over there, which is amazing. So quite quite the food scene that we do have here. You know, don't don't feel like you just have to eat at the dining halls or anything like that. Please go explore. And certainly with Restaurant Week, I certainly love to talk about our Restaurant Week here. Um, Twice a year, we get together, all the restaurants get together, and we host uh, Restaurant Week, which is about 10 days. It's a little bit of a misnomer. Um, where all the restaurants get together, and you can get a three-course lunch for around 10 to $15, or you can get a three-course dinner for around 20 to 30 It's a great way to go out and sample a bunch of different local restaurants. It's a great way to spend all of your money, but it's so worth it because you get to try out all these amazing restaurants. So certainly love to point that out. So Mike, I don't know if you have anything else to add about our restaurants. Yeah, um, really the only thing, you know, really to add into it is if there's a type of food that you want, I guarantee you it is going to be available somewhere here in the greater Bington area. There is a question about the kosher food scene. And we do have a couple restaurants um, in the area um, that do cater um, to kosher. Uh, Halal Bites is the one that um, comes to mind. And actually, Doug, you may not be aware, because I don't know if you've been to campus lately, but University Plaza, um, the, uh, Halal Bites is moving into the plaza from Riverside Drive into the Vestal Plaza. Is that the new place that's going in? I've it seen, is. I've seen a bunch of construction and stuff on that, but I, I didn't yep. know what it was. Oh, that's that's so going to be Halal Bite. So there's going to be a uh, kosher restaurant right next door to Binghamton University. That's so fun. I didn't know that. I just learned that when I went to uh, the new Red Red Chili uh, just a couple days ago. I'm good. So I'm done with this slide if you want to move forward. So, of course, we do have some other amazing activities that, you know, just kind of fall in uh, other, you know, the other category. Uh, one of my favorite things about Binghamton is certainly the Ross Park Zoo. Fun fact, it is actually only, it is the fifth oldest zoo in America. So it's been here for a while. As you can see here, it was actually established in 1875. Um, so it's been here a while and it's still going strong. Again, I, like I mentioned, my family was actually up this weekend. And they wanted to go to the zoo. So I was like, absolutely. I haven't been in a while. Um, so it's a small little zoo. It only takes about an hour to get through. But it is the cutest little zoo. And they have all these amazing um, animals that are there. Um, especially my personal favorite. They do have penguins, which always makes me so happy to go see them. Um, they just got a new one where they had a naming contest. And they, uh, I suggested Twilight. Again, going back to that Twilight, uh, Twilight Zone reference. But um, they decided to name the new penguin Aurora. Um, and they are just the cutest little things. They have wallabies, they have a sloth, they have all these amazing animals. Um, and, you know, it is very popular amongst our students to go to. They do have special student discounts, and it's just a lot of fun. They do have special events, like uh, they you have a, what they call Boo at the Zoo, usually around this time, which is a Halloween-inspired event. Um, so they always have events throughout the year as well. So certainly love to highlight them. If you look on the top, the top right-hand corner, we have... Uh, so when you look at a map of Binghamton, you'll often hear these terms, west side, east side, south side. It's just how the Binghamton area is kind of broke up, especially downtown. So I live, I just bought a house on the east side of Binghamton. So it's just if you look at a map, it's just on the east side. Where a lot of students do live um, when they do move off campus is the west side. Um, there's pretty residential. Lots of student housing and everything like that are available to there. And one really amazing event that happens in late August, early September is an amazing event called Porch Fest. And what Porch Fest is, as you can kind of see it there, is that all of these houses that have these amazing front porches 
kind of open up their space and they act as stages that all these local musicians and bands will come and perform for the public for free. It is, I've never seen or heard of an event like this before and it's a really amazing event. It brings so many people out and about. They usually have a little map where you can go visit all the different stages. There's like over 150 performances that happen that day um, in the span of like the eight hours that they perform. Uh, I remember when I, so I moved, like I just said, I moved from, to the east side, but I was originally on the west side and just sitting in my living room, I opened the windows and I could hear about four different stages in, in around me. Um, so it's a really awesome event. It's just a great way to go out, especially on a nice day and go kind of check out all the local musicians that we do have here. Um, you know, we're a great, we do have a great music scene and it's certainly a lot of fun to go check that out. And I do know plenty of students who have performed at this. If you're interested in performing and stuff like that, you can certainly go um, and get a stage uh, during Porch Fest. So it's a really great opportunity. If you're interested in skiing and snowboarding, there's certainly plenty of local mountains in the area. Uh, we have Bel Air, we have Hunter Mountain. Um, we all we have a bunch of different local mountains. I'm trying to think of another one, Holiday Mountain. Um, so there's a couple, a couple different mountains in the area that students will certainly go and uh, bring up their equipment because we also have a really great organization on campus called the Binghamton Snowcats. That is our skiing and snowboarding club essentially on campus. So they do bus trips, you know, when it usually gets colder, you know, maybe in November, December, um, January, February, March. They'll do bus trips to these places and go visit and, and go and spend the day skiing and snowboarding. So it's just a lot of fun if that's what you're interested in. Um, there's certainly plenty of places to do that. And of course, if you want to go out and, uh, you know, want to go out to a farmer's market, you know, popular on the weekends, we do have the Broome County uh, Farmer's Market here in Binghamton as well. I was just there not too long ago. Um, and there's certainly so many amazing things that you can kind of go and grab. Um, I usually go get a loaf of fresh bread that's there and it is absolutely incredible. So certainly a lot of other fun activities that we do have in the area as well. And I already kind of alluded to off campus housing a little bit. Um, like I mentioned, we do have the west side uh, of Binghamton, which is a little bit more residential where it's a little bit, you know, there are houses, you know, you can go rent a house with a few friends. But Binghamton also has uh, so many different student housing complexes here in Binghamton as well. Um, Binghamton is a lot more of a college town than people realize. There's certainly lots that cater to students. Um, as you can see here, these are just a, a few of our, um, a few of the places that students do gravitate towards, uh, whether it be the Shenango place, which is right on the river. Um, so is the Twin River Commons. They're almost uh, essentially right next to each other. University Lofts is a little bit more downtown um, towards our traffic circle. U Club Binghamton is the, that place where it's, uh, University Plaza, as Mike mentioned, where the Hall Bites is going into. Um, that's where U Club is. It's amazing uh, little kind of mall area that has restaurants and um, has some shopping and, and stuff like that, but mainly restaurants um, like a Tully's uh, Copper Top. There's a Chipotle in that plaza. So um, if you really like Chipotle, uh, you can definitely spend a lot of your money there um, if you live there. Um, <laughs> And, uh, and also our one of our newest ones there is uh, 50 Front Street, um, gorgeous place um, <laughs> that is also right on the river. So lots of different opportunities for you to kind of explore where you might want to live. Most of these are furnished. Um, I don't think 50 Front is, um, but most of these do come fully furnished for our students. Um, and there's a couple different layouts. Most of them you actually, you get your own room and you get your own bathroom for. Um, so it's certainly a great place to kind of explore once you're already, if you do want to, of course, you can always stay on campus if you want to, um, you know, or if you're a first year residents. student, of course, as first yeah. year students are required to live on campus. Um, but we correct. thought, but we thought it was really important to kind of help showcase some of the off campus living because we know living on campus is not for every student. Um, so we just wanted to provide some of those options in case you're, you know, want to at least explore. Um, other options besides living on campus. And of course, we strongly encourage all of our students to live on campus because you do get a great um, college experience being on campus as well. Yeah, no, absolutely. I personally really enjoyed my time on campus. I lived on campus for about two years in our Hinman College and I moved off campus and did move to the west side and into one of those houses for my senior year um, and also my graduate year. So, um, but I know plenty of people, I know people who have lived in every single one of these buildings except for 50 front it actually completed after i graduated um 
so they're absolutely trust me they're absolutely gorgeous um great security with them um and everything like that so uh just a couple of options for you that we certainly wanted to highlight that um you know if you want to live in more of a downtown city atmosphere that there are certainly places that you can do that here in binghamton as well absolutely and also the important thing to note is binghamton university is not affiliated with any of of these places these are strictly 100 percent um independent from the university correct oh it's important to, to point that out for legal matters of course <laughs> And of course, you know, we did get one of these questions already, but you know, how do you get there? You know, downtown is about 10 minutes away or so from campus, but there are certainly plenty of ways to get there or anywhere in the local area. So we do have our off-campus college transport or OCCT buses. They are the blue buses that you see in the bottom left-hand corner. They are our student-run bus company. The CEO is actually the president of the student association. So, um, they go to all popular off-campus housing. They go to downtown. They go to Wegmans. They go to Target, Walmart, um, lots of places on the parkway, lots of different places in the area that will the Blue Buses will get you there. Um, and it is free with your student ID, which is pretty nice. You can always become a bus driver if you want. That's actually one of the well-paying jobs on campus. They pay about sixteen twenty-five last time I heard an hour, um, and you also get your commercial driver's license with them. So really awesome you know way that students get involved and uh you know all the students really utilize the bus the buses that we do have whether it be the blue buses or if you see in the top right hand corner we do have the broom county buses that come through binghamton as well both are free for students to use with your student id so uh the broom county buses go to all the places the blue buses go to and more uh, for instance, my very first year here at Binghamton, part of my part of my uh, one of my classes was that I had to volunteer at a local elementary school, um, I think for about an hour and a half every week. Um, and it wasn't really within walking distance and the the city, the sorry, the uh, student buses didn't exactly go there, but the county buses did. So it was really nice to hop on a county bus. It took you right to the elementary school um, and you got back and it was totally for free. So uh, really you can get anywhere in the, in the local area totally for free. But of course, if you don't want to wait for a bus or anything like that, we do have a couple different options for you. We do have Uber and Lyft now available in upstate New York. Uh, for a while, we didn't have it, but now it is fully here in Binghamton. Um, so you can feel free if you already have the app perfect or download them. Um, you can get anywhere with Uber or Lyft. Or of course, you can just call a good old fashioned taxi company that we do have here. We do have plenty of them in Binghamton. So first year students are unfortunately not allowed to have cars. So we want to make sure that there are plenty of ways for you to get around in the local area totally for free. So we do have lots of different ways, like I said, whether it be the buses, Uber, Lyft, anything like that. So that's a little bit about the Binghamton community. Like I said, we are a lot more of a college town than a lot of people realize. We are very accommodating to our students um, who, who want to live in downtown and, you know, who want to travel to downtown. There's so many things to do. Um, I highly recommend if you ever appear in the area, if you want to take a self-guided tour, you know, campus is open to the public. Make sure you are checking out the local area, whether it be, um, you know, Vestal, the Vestal Parkway with all the rest, with all the chain stuff that I mentioned. But please make sure you go into downtown, drive around a little bit, go check out our downtown campus. You can see all the, all the off-campus housing locations, all the local restaurants. Make sure you eat at a local restaurant. You know, it's certainly... Um, quite uh quite an experience and of course there's our contact information both myself and mike's you can always feel free to reach out to myself or michael um as well as our general admin account as well as our transfer account as well so you can feel free um to email that and um the zoom chat hours which i think mike just put the zoom link into the chat yep um, so if you do have any uh questions you can always feel free to pop on the zoom chat hours that happen from 10 to 5 every day as well and so that kind of wraps up our presentation. Mike, I don't know if you have anything else to add. No, um, just thank you so much for taking time out of your Monday late afternoon, early evening to learn a little bit about the Binghamton area. Um, we do have a couple minutes. If you do have any questions, we'll be more, either Doug or myself will be more than happy to answer them. Um, if you want to type them into that Q&A. We'll wait, a, we'll wait a minute to see if anyone uh, does pop up with any questions. So as we're waiting to see if there are any questions, Doug, is there any 
uh, suggestions or, or anything that you would want a student to visit or something to do uh, if they come to Binghamton? What is the top thing that you would highly recommend that they do while they're here? Um, you know, just try to take in as much as you can. I, like I mentioned at the end there, certainly try to eat at a local restaurant. Um, you know, you'll pass by all the quick options, all the chain restaurants that you know and you love. Take the time, take the extra 10 minutes to go into downtown, find one of those local restaurants um, and really experience it. It's such a welcoming community that we have down there. Um, so certainly take the time to, to explore and, you know, maybe find that maybe your, your new favorite restaurant. You come here as a student and all of a sudden you're already, you've already kind of hit the ground running. You can share it with your friends, be like, hey, I found this really amazing restaurant. Um, let's go, let's go check it out for restaurant week, you know, kind of share, share it with everyone. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of the food here, if you can't tell. Um, I absolutely love, and I'm super excited to try Stone Fox, you know, hopefully soon, so. All right, so a question popped in. Can students get internships in town? Absolutely. Um, we have, <laughs> excuse me, <coughs> we have a lot of great opportunities for a lot of internships here in the greater Binghamton area. But if you're looking to go elsewhere, if you want to experience, you know, an internship in a, in a different city, kind of as I alluded to at the very beginning of the presentation about where Binghamton's located, being centrally located not only within the state of New York, but also within the Northeast as well, um, you can get lucky enough to get an internship away from the Binghamton area that you can complete over the summer or maybe a semester long internship. Um, so those possibilities definitely do exist. And you can also, we have internships on campus as well um, that you can certainly explore. We have, we have internships normally in our office. You know, there's plenty of offices that do have internships as well. So lots of different opportunities to get internships, whether it be on campus, off campus, you know, anywhere you want. Great. All right. So that kind of looks like that is the end of the questions that you all have today. Um, so again, thank you so much for taking time out of your night uh, and spend a little bit with Doug and I uh, to talk about our favorite thing, which of course is the greater Binghamton area. Um, Doug, anything else you would like to add before we head out? Yeah, just thanks so much for joining everyone. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Please feel free to check out all the other uh, presentations that we're doing um, this week. Uh, you know, there's certainly lots of, you know, informational presentations. Uh, we're doing some on res life. We're doing pretty much anything that you can think of. We certainly have this week. So make sure you're checking out some of the other presentations that we have going on. Absolutely. And keep in mind, if there's a session that maybe you wish we offered, uh, check our November open house as we've already had some great sessions already that if you missed one, you can always uh, register for it again in November, um, which you can go to the same website to look for the October dates. November date is there as well. So on behalf of Doug, myself, and the rest of our colleagues in the Office of Undergraduate Admissions, thank you so much for joining us and we hope you enjoy the rest of your night. Take care. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night.